Hi, welcome back. Today we're going to talk about requirements engineering for sustainability. When I speak about my research, I often get asked, well, what exactly do you want? Do you want sustainable software or do you want software systems for sustainability? And my answer is both. So I want software systems for sustainability. I strongly believe that we as software systems developers can make a much stronger and better contribution to developing a more sustainable human lifestyle. And what that takes as well is sustainable software systems. So software systems that are going to last us a long time, that are not greedy in how many resources they consume, and that are easy to maintain. But I also want us to look into the purpose of a specific system. Is that going to contribute to our long-term sustainability? For some reason, we humans think we're the most important uh, species on this planet. So usually when we talk about sustainability and sustainable development, that is for the humans and the environment along and hopefully hopefully that'll go hand in hand because without a well sustained environment we as humans are not going to make it either so therefore when we start talking about software engineering for sustainability our natural start is in requirements engineering and for that we're going to base it in uh, artifact oriented requirements engineering why because it's easier to explain, it's easier to apply, and I will be able to give you a rough understanding of that within just a few minutes of this video. So artifact-oriented requirements engineering means we are going to agree on what are the intermediate work results that we are going to create, and you have a little more flexibility in how you get there. But we agree, these are the intermediate milestones. And that's how you can then agree with your team who exactly is going to carry out which tasks to get there. And for the requirements engineering part, we usually differentiate between the context, the business context, or the environment, or the problem domain that we are talking about. And then the solution domain on the other side. So those are the requirements or the solution domain. For getting started with the context, with the problem domain, I first need to understand who are the stakeholders that I need to go talk to. So at the very beginning of our requirements engineering, is find out who your stakeholders are, who are the people that you are going to need to talk to. And we will document that in a stakeholder model. That stakeholder model should definitely have at least one representative who is an advocate for sustainability for this specific system. So make sure you find a stakeholder who can represent that. If you cannot find one of those in the organization, then that organization has some work to do. What you will also probably have early on, or what you might have early on, is a business model. Either if the system is already in place and needs to be maintained, updated, reworked, overhauled, then that is a business model that has been in place previously and they do their business processes in a certain way. And you want to check that one for sustainability as well, according to a couple of checklists. Once we have that stakeholder model and the general business model, we can start developing a so-called goal model. Now the goal model can look like this, like a tree. It might have one root node and then several sub-goals 
and then these get decomposed into SOAP goals again, we might have business goals up here. We might have usage goals on the middle layer that tell us about what capabilities this future system is going to have, and then system goals on the bottom. And each of them can be decomposed. Some of the goals that you will find in here, specifically as you go down to the lower layer, will also be constraints. If you want to know more in detail about the specific techniques that lead to these individual artifacts, then please go up, look the videos, look up the videos in the requirements engineering course on the stakeholders and the goal model and on the business model. Now, we want to make sure that sustainability is somewhere represented here. So where does sustainability show up in that goal model? Is it reflected in the business goals? Is it reflected in the mission for the system somehow? And then once we have established that goal model and have double checked with the stakeholders that these are really the goals we want to talk about, we can move on and develop a system vision. Now that system vision is pretty much at the border between the problem domain and the solution domain because we will be talking about what that system is supposed to do, but we're not yet going to explain how exactly it's going to do that. So there might be a couple of actors in here, there might be um, some concerns that they have, there might be a system in the middle with, with a couple of interfaces that your users can interact with, there will be a couple of of features that the system can carry out. There might be something like a user community that interacts with the system and that forms kind of a bond in between their individual users. There might be certain structural entities that the system communicates with, maybe some external databases. This up here is a UI, there's another UI. And then we want to understand how all of the concerns that come together from here, from the different stakeholders, can be put into one rich picture that's going to be your system vision that is agreed upon in between all stakeholders. And here, I would also like sustainability to show up, to be reflected somewhere, so I can double check for that. Now, after that one, I'm going to move on in two directions. One is I'm going to construct the, the use cases for the system. So there is going to be a usage model. Maybe I have several actors in here. Maybe I only have one, but I have my system boundary and my individual use cases that get refined in scenarios. So that will describe me still on a black box level, but in a little more detail what exactly the system is, is going to help us carry out. And then from that system vision with influences from the goal model, with influences from the usage model, we're going to develop our sustainability analysis. Perfectly five-pointed star, right? Something like that. So we have our sustainability analysis diagram that has the three orders of effect. So we have the economic dimension, the individual dimension, the social dimension, technical dimension, and the environmental dimension. So our sustainability analysis diagram, we usually abbreviate it with SUSAT because the name is pretty long. This sustainability analysis diagram we'll look into the life cycle effects, the enabling effects, and the systemic effects. These three effects are taken from a model from Lawrence Hilty, or by Lawrence Hilty, and the life cycle effects, they describe the first order impacts, the direct effects that a system has on its environment, like the energy that it consumes, for example. The enabling effects are the effects that are 
made possible by the usage of the system. So what does this system enable the user to do and what effects does that create as an impact in the environment, for the economy, for the economy, in the social community, the immediate community. And then the structural effects or third order effects, those describe the systemic changes that can happen over a longer period of time if many users start using the system, if it gets taken up really well. So for example, if I talk about a car sharing system, then a systemic effect could be if many people use that over an extended period of time, we have less trouble with parking space and the air quality gets better in our area because there's way less cars on the road. That can also lead to rebound effects, the structural effects. So for example, technology has become ever more efficient, which is great. Devices have become smaller, which is also great. But as a consequence, that has led to many of us owning several devices instead of just one as we used to, or maybe no digital device before that. So in the systemic effects, we can have both, or on any of these levels, we can have positive or negative impacts. And we wanna make sure that in our sustainability analysis diagram, both of those sides show up. Now, mind you, this is just a diagram. This is just one overview diagram that can summarize the most important points of your sustainability analysis. And yes, you will need a document that details what is happening in these individual cells, like what are the positive effects and what are the negative effects and impacts in each and every one of those cells. All this taken together is a very brief explanation of requirements engineering for sustainability. Now, if we want to take the requirements engineering part and expand that to the entire software engineering process, that means that later on, during the design stage, I need to find the right patterns that help me implement these goals, and I need to put certain quality assurance measures in place that will help me track the metrics that I've identified for these goals and make sure that we're actually reaching the sustainability goals we set up here and our stakeholders said they cared about and we care about. So I would love for you to start putting this into practice and, and let me know how that works, whether that is in your student projects, whether that is in your industry projects, whether that is in your consulting business. I'm very curious to hear from you. Thank you.